guys so today we are going to talk a little bit about content management systems and considerations that you have to have when you make a decision on your CMS so let's get into it you see the other day a subscriber of mine reached out and asked Frederick how should I think about content management systems should I use something like WordPress for example or should I try my hand at you know something that is JavaScript based, like a something that is, well, that was basically the question, a JavaScript based CMS system. Now, this is a great, it's actually a kind of a little bit of a, it's a tricky question for me because honestly, when it comes to CMS systems and so forth, there's only really a handful of the really major ones that at least I know about that are used in a broader sense, if you will. And I don't actually know of any CMS system that uses an all JavaScript backend. There probably are, and I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna get a few suggestions now on these. But anywho, I'll, I'll try my best to kind of just relay my thought process about this without going into much too, you know, in, into much too deta details about like exactly what to pick, because honestly, I couldn't answer you if I wanted to. But when it comes to C CMS systems, one thing that you should consider is that a these major CMS systems, such as WordPress, are off-the-shelf solutions. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that this is a finished product that is designed by a lot of people to be mainstream and to be mass consumable. It's a platform that allows you to add your own customizations on top of, an, of a core, if you will. And that core is going to affect your user, like the consumers of your product and you yourself in a lot of different ways. Now, the first thing that's going to happen is that the size of the, like the brand itself is going to be very determining when you want to sell the product that you're making. Because remember, say WordPress, for example, WordPress is not a, f like in of itself, it can be used for a lot of things. But if you are a programmer using it for some purpose, it's very likely that you're going to build something on top of WordPress. Either you're going to create a theme or you're going to create an application or something of that nature. Which means that you first and foremost need to consider if WordPress or, in this, or Django, which, whichever CMS you want to use, if that's going to fit your use case. Because if, it, if you want to do something that a CMS can't, can allow you to do, then it's not the right thing for you. Because the, the, when the user, the subscriber was asking about CMS, is my own, I kind of got the sensation that he was, ask, he was asking from the perspective as, as if a CMS system is this obvious thing that you should use in application development. It's not, guys. You should know that a CMS system is a very specific type of thing to create or rather to use in a very specific type of application. Most pro professional companies do not use CMS systems. They build their own thing from, from, from scratch because as I said, this is an off-the-shelf solution. It's already, it's already made tons of decisions on behalf of like their own product. It's a product itself. And unless you decide that that product or rather your use case fits into that product, you shouldn't be using it. That's, that's, as I said, number one. And that also means, as I said, the size of, of, how, how, of the brand, if you will, is going to be very determining how, how well it's going to suit you. Because a lot of the smaller CMS systems are simpler, or maybe they fit your use case very well, but they're not as supported. They don't have all the features. They might have all kinds of other limitations. So to get back to something concrete. When it comes to picking a, CSS system, uh, a CMS system, it's a lot more important that you consider the end user of your system. In other words, what are their needs? If you are building a small website for yourself and you know that, oh yeah, I just need some stylings to an already existing theme or something of that nature, then yeah, sure, a CMS system is perfect if you want to do that. If you're building it for a client, I mean, the times I've used the CMS system is when I've had a small business that have need of something that, they, they want something to be very quick. They want a fair amount of customization options. They're not so focused on like, everything being super custom because honestly, WordPress got popular for one main reason. It's because it's easy to use, it's easy to customize. That's why, it's, it, why it is where it is today. And 
having that power in the hands of some type of user is great. I mean, it's great if you can give them that. And what's great for you as a developer is also that if you can have something that an off the shelf solution such as WordPress, it's great to, in order for you to be able to kind of avoid having to build everything from scratch and to maintain it and so forth because that's kind of where I need to be a little bit opinionated here and I, I have to go and say that when you pick a CMS it's much more important that you pick a popular one than it is to pick something that is like JavaScript specific or in a specific language. It, that, it matters a lot more that it's popular and the reason as I said is because you are not going to want to maintain this. Like if you are you're, you as the developer, you're just building something on top of this already existing core. And if that core isn't well supported and has all the features that you need, you're kind of in a lock-in because you don't want to be in a situation where you go to your customer and you show them the, all the work that you put in and then they say, hey, but I want to be able to do this as well. And then your tiny little CMS system that you've downloaded from GitHub, which uses your, your favorite stack, can't do the thing that your customer wants to be able to do then you're in a pick pickle because now you've lost the benefits of having the CMS system. And as I said, the benefits is that it's already built on top of something. So your user has a lot more features than what you could build in the same amount of time. So when I pick a CMS system or the times I've had to do that for another company, what I do is that I talk to my customer and I try to figure out if they are familiar with any already existing CMS system. Usually it's, it's WordPress. And that's why I, I, al I almost always go with WordPress because almost everybody uses it or knows about it in some fashion. Which means that I know that if I build my solution on top of WordPress, I'm safe because my customer is going to have lots of documentation to find on the internet. They don't have to come to me for every single question. There's going to be tons of features that they're going to be able to download plugins. They're going to be able to do everything that they think that they, I could, they, th that they want, right? And that's exactly what you're going for. So to answer this question, I would go with WordPress every single day of the week over a, like a smaller, less known CMS system. And it's not because the, the smaller, less known CMS system is bad, it's just that the brand of WordPress is so massive and most people that you are going to build a CMS system for is going to get all their needs covered by WordPress. And if you can guarantee that everything that your user wants to be able to do with the CMS system and that the CMS system is well supported, you know, then you can pick anything. But WordPress is uh, it's the safest bet that I know of, at least. Yeah, so that's my, my answer. Have a great day.